Well, good morning to some, good afternoon to others. Welcome to the Reliability Webinar presented by Industrial Kiln and Dryer Group, IKD. My name is Glenn Hansen. I am a uh, technical salesperson with IKD and uh, working through the slides here. We're going to uh, talk a little bit about real, what is reliability and why do we care about reliability. Uh, just a quick little bio of myself. I've got about 36 years of rotary equipment experience with focus mainly on uh, pulp and paper, lime recovery kilns, as well as hazardous waste destruction kiln systems. A number of different things in research and testing, process design, installation, startup, uh, and maintenance. I uh, have done a number of papers and uh, publications, uh, mainly in lime recovery design and operations. If you encounter technical difficulties during our webinar, please call us at the number listed on the screen, 877-316-6140, or you can email at ikdwebinar at industrialkiln.com and mention webinar troubles. You'll be transferred to someone who can help you. We will encourage your questions, but you will be muted uh, for most of the webinar. What we'd like you to you do is use the question box that is the, uh, at the right-hand side of your screen, type in your questions, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. This session will be recorded, and a link will be provided to you after the completion of the webinar. Um, we also you to encourage you to uh, tell others we will have this up on our YouTube page as well uh, for future viewing. So what is system reliability? We all talk about reliability and are all in favor of reliability. Sounds kind of cool. It's easy to support. But what is it and why do we care? Many of you here measure reliability at your plant. Um, what we're doing here is there's a few rhetorical slides, so I don't expect you to raise your hands and answer at this point in time. But uh, many people do measure reliability in different ways. What is your running reliability? Now, we're curious. What's your definition of reliability? Put properly, reliability is the probability that a component, system, or process will function without failure for a specified length of time when operated correctly under specific conditions. This is a definition from Paul Berenger, who's written a lot on, uh, on reliability. It is not the same as availability. Availability defines the percent of the time a system is alive and ready for use if called upon. Reliability specifically addresses the probability for a failure-free interval of operation under specific conditions. Set mathematically, time up over time available equals percent reliability. Since components, equipment and systems, and people are not perfect, 100% reliability is not technically feasible. So what can we do? First, let's discuss calculating reliability so that you can figure out where you are so that you can decide how you can get to better reliability. There's different component configurations. We'll look at simple, simple series configurations or complex uh, series and parallel type configurations. We'll concentrate on three basic types, the series, the parallel, and combined systems. In a series system, series system in which you have three pieces of equipment that are relying on each other to produce a given product coming out of that part of the system, for example, a feed system, a dryer or kiln, and a discharge system. They are all independent. They all rely upon each other for the output coming into the input of the next unit. To get that reliability, you simply multiply the reliability of each component by each other to come up with a percent reliability. In this case, it's shown at the bottom as 95.55% in this series. In a series configuration, the component with the least reliability has the biggest effect on the system's reliability. 
As a result, the reliability of a series system is always less than the reliability of the least reliable component. When doing repairs or looking at a series type system, you're going to want to look at the least reliable component to improve that to make the biggest effect. In a simple parallel system, you are looking at units that independently can produce what they need to go to the next point in the system. In other words, they are 100% redundant. Sometimes people have uh, two units that typically run at varying rates, but are, are actually can operate independently to provide 100% provide of the needed output to the next part of the system. So you have to, in a simple parallel system, know that these are completely redundant that basically you can turn one off and not run it, you can turn two of them off and not run it, and it is not going to affect the overall system. In this case, the calculation gets a little bit more complicated. As you can see down below, calculating it out, we come up with 99.99% efficiency. You are assuming that components in parallel are truly redundant. You're not counting on combined output. If you have a system in which you have two units that are working together, they are more in a series type design than a parallel type design. You must consider them then as series rather than a parallel type system. In this case, where would you focus to increase system reliability? The least reliable or the most reliable? The most reliable in a parallel system. Because unless you raise the reliability of the least reliable component to a value higher than the most reliable, you have had little effect on the system reliability. Now we'll look at a simple combined system in which you have two units running in parallel, feeding a third point in the system that is in series with it. You basically start out calculating the parallel situation and then treat it as a series. So you combine them then and come out and uh, calculate it out with the series and come up with an overall reliability of 99.95%. In this case, again, you'd be looking back to the situation in which uh, increasing the best reliability to do the overall effect. That's enough math for now. For those interested, there are reams and reams of theory and mathematical approaches to reliability calculations and modeling. Here are a few further readings on reliability. So we've got the simple theory. Now what? Back to reliability and why do we care? We know how to calculate it. Let's see and explore what effects, positive or negative, reliability can have on our business. Looking at some important vocabulary as we proceed further, need to define some things or look at particular items that we will bring up. Availability again defines the percent of time the system is alive and ready for use if called upon. Reliability is the probability that a component system or process will function without failure for a specified length of time when operated correctly under specific conditions. Planned downtime is the amount of time officially scheduled in the production plan, which includes no orders, change orders, cha no orders, change overs, and planned maintenance. Unplanned downtime is the interruption of service caused by equipment breakdown, as opposed to plan planned downtime where equipment shutdown has been scheduled. There are tangible or direct type costs. These are quantifiable costs related to identifiable sources or assets. Tangible costs represent expensive ari expenses arising for such things as purchasing materials, paying employees, or fixing equipment. Intangible or indirect costs are an unquantifiable cost relating to an identifiable source. Intangible costs present, represent a variety of expenses such as losses in productivity, customer goodwill, or drops in employee morale. 
Again, some examples of tangible costs, lost wages, lost inventory, repair of labor costs, repair material costs, marketing costs, bank fees, or legal penalty penalties from not delivering a product. Intangible costs are represented by lost business opportunities or lost sales, loss of employees. If they're not working, they want to go home. Decrease in stock value because of downtime. Loss of customer or partner goodwill. You're not fulfilling those promises. Brand damage because somebody else may be able to supply them. Driving business to your competitors because you can't fulfill those orders and bad publicity or bad press because you are down in an unplanned situation. Please remember that we will be accepting questions. Please type them into the question box and we will answer them at the end. Most of the time, when you look at any of the models showing estimations of these costs during an unplanned downtime event, the largest cost to the business by far is lost sales and thus lost gross margin to the company. So let's work through an example. Acme Processing, run by our dear old friend Wiley E. Coyote. Better watch out for those roadrunners. Output from Acme, Acme Processing is 30 tons per hour. The sales price per ton is $500. The plant sales output per, di per day is $360,000. The base equipment availability is year-round, 24 hours per day, which equates to 365 days per year, ignoring the leap year. But the production plan has planned in 20 days of shutdown or planned maintenance. Therefore, the effective availability of the APME processing system is 345 days. The budget reliability goal <clears throat> is 95%. Therefore, budget availability then is the effective availability times budget reliability, which is 345 days times the 95%, which equates to 327 and 3 quarter days. Given the above, the budget sales volume for the year is $117,990,000. What happens if the actual reliability drops to 92%? Mr. Coyote is spending too much time chasing roadrunners. Actual production then is effective availability times actual reliability, 345 days times the 92% which drops it to 317.40 days. Given the above, the actual sales volume for the year is now down to 114,264,000. Remember, the budget goal was 117,990,000. So the plant misses that sales goal by $3,726,000 and all of the profit associated with these sales. Now, if Mr. Coyote catches the Roadrunner and is able to contain him, thereby increasing his reliability to 98%, we go through the calculations again, and we are now getting 338.1 days of running time rather, or actual sales volume, rather than uh, the 95% or the 92%. This gives us 121,716,000. Going back through it again, we've now beat that sales goal by $3,726,000. Think of how that will affect commissions, profits, etc. The boss is always more generous when there's more net profit. Remember, we start at the beginning of the example that a day of production was worth $360,000 in sales. Every day down costs $360,000 in sales. Every hour that that system is down at Acme Processing, there's a loss of $15,000 in sales. These numbers are extremely important 
when looking at reliability because it takes those numbers right to the bottom line. It lets you know and helps you explain much more thoroughly to others that increasing reliability can significantly help the company make more money overall, people keep their jobs, and everything is far more secure. So it's very important that your team knows these numbers and they are utilized in making decisions. What can you do to approach reliability tactics? What can you do to approach them and increase reliability? One is how you look at your maintenance programs. Another is establishing reliability trends so you can determine a baseline and how to improve reliability and what those benefits will be as you improve them. Identifying critical components or parts within your system, thereby decreasing the potential for additional downtime caused by waits or lead times in critical components. Doing root cause analysis when you do have failures. That way you can avoid those failures in the future. And implementing maintenance as a profit center rather than a cost center. Is your maintenance done in a reactive manner? Is it done in a preventative manner? Is it done in a predictive manner? In a reactive manner, lots of fire drills. There's lots of people running in all directions trying to keep systems running. Uh, people get called from normal preventative maintenance uh, times to just put out fires, to go and fix something, throw some tape over it, get it back running again. In a preventative situation, you're planning it for the future. You're planning for your shutdown so that you can have things in stock, ready to go. You know how long it's going to take you to make repairs, and pre you prepare for that. Predictive maintenance obviously helps your reliability by looking at what is going on with your systems. For example, in what we show here, is using thermal imaging to determine if you have higher friction going on in bearings or other t equipments of that type in which you need to plan for downtime to replace that. If you can predict a failure before it occurs and plan downtime to fix it, obviously reliability is going to improve because that failure is not going to occur during planned uptime. Establishing reliability trends. We give an example here of an inspection program in which you go around on a kiln or dryer looking at a variety of, of different factors. You can uh, create one of these for your specific process systems, processing systems in your plant. Scheduled inspections of your equipment, whether they be daily, weekly, quarterly, and annual, become very important. Make sure that your staff knows where these sheets are, that they're filled out completely, and they're filled out honestly, so that you can look at them on a consistent basis and plan your maintenance better. Once you establish trends that are occurring, you're going to be able to determine wear patterns, determine when you need to buy additional parts, determine when parts are going to be reconditioned and plan for extra maintenance time if necessary. Use technology and technical specialists as needed. NDT testing is very helpful and technical consultation is also helpful. For example, many plants have now gone to opening up uh, bushing type bearings and checking out the shafts using NDT technology. In this method, you can find cracks, etc and take out and uh, uh, replace those rollers during a planned downtime rather than risk their failure during planned uptime, thereby taking your system out of commission and lowering your reliability. Identifying critical components in your system. Long lead time parts have a dramatic effect in the picture, we're showing a gear going up on a major kiln system. This is a very critical lead time, long lead time component on rotary equipment. If you have a gear, if you have a system that's been on a kiln, for example, for a long period of time, typically these gears can be reversed and used on the other side. Um, checking and inspecting them regularly, making sure lubrication 
is going to them is very important. Once you have flipped the gear for the first time, more than half of its life is gone. Gears can run very long in lead time and expense. That's the time to start planning and thinking about what it's going to take to get that replacement gear on site. You may want to get that information to your management in advance so they can plan years out, years ahead, of when they're going to purchase that and get it in stock so you have that spare. Something to remember as well as when you pull out critical spare items such as gears, rollers, etc., save those units because if they are not dramatically uh, damaged, if there's no cracking, for example, in a gear, if there's no cracking in a roller shaft, they're simply worn down, these can be saved for future emergency repairs. That way, you can at least get the unit back up and running if you have to wait for a long lead time item. That's an example of a contingency plan when you identify your critical components. Looking at root cause analysis when you have a failure. Why do the components fail? Why have they failed? Is the failure material related or is it wear related? Are we dealing simply with symptoms or the root cause? What is shown here is, a, uh, is wear on a gear, which can be related by contamination to the lubrication or other issues. So what you want to do if you do have a failure situation is make sure you know what the root cause of that is so you can avoid it in the future. Implementing the maintenance as a profit center rather than a cost center. Is your maintenance department considered by management to be a cost center? Most often it is. The complaint is always when you go in and you, you request to increase uh, the size of a motor, increase the shaft size, purchase spare parts, etc. The cost is always looked at as the problem. But you must communicate the idea of maintenance being a profit generator. If you can plan in advance, or take into account uh, things that you need to make your system more reliable, you can demonstrate to your management that you will actually increase reliability, thereby increasing profit, because you will take less unplanned downtime. We'll give a, a couple of reliability failure examples. Gear failures at Company A. A large kiln had a gear, fa gear failure as a, la as a result of a lack of lubrication because the spray nozzles were plugged and no oil reached the gear. The gear teeth were worn over 40% in a very short period of time, and it was necessary to purchase a new gear. The cost of the gear was $850,000, cost of installation $450,000, and lost production seven days. The plant was in a sold out condition with the loss of production rated at approximately $12,000 per hour, a very significant damaging situation to the company. So looking back at another, at a one way to look for root causes, this is a five why analysis on this. Why did the gear fail? due to the lack of lubrication because of the plug nozzles on the spray system. Why were the nozzles plugged? The oil was too thick to pass through the nozzles because of the cold climate. Why was the lack of lubrication not detected? There was not an inspection program set up in place to look at the gear on a regular basis. Why was there no inspection program in place? Because assumptions were made that someone else was checking the gear the infamous pointing of fingers in opposite directions. How was that assumption made? Because there was not communication amongst operations, maintenance, etc., as to who was going to check these things and make sure that that gear was being lubricated, even though everyone knew how important that gear was. We'll look at another situation, a major gear failure at Company B, we'll call them. Again, lack of lubrication 
because the lubrication valve was turned off to the oil spray system and no oil reached the gear. Again, gear teeth worn over 40% in a short period of time, necessary to purchase a new gear. The cost of the gear was $1,250,000 and gear delivery was 24 months. Obviously, something had to be done immediately to still run the plant. So it was necessary to reverse that existing gear that was worn on one side for $450,000 and seven days of downtime to survive until the new gear arrived. That significant wear was to a point which there was concern that even if reversed, that gear might fail. So they were running on borrowed time. Once the gear was delivered to the site and the worn gear was replaced with the new gear, had another cost of $500,000 and another seven days of unplanned downtime, the total costs add up to $1,250,000 for the gear, $900,000 for the repair work, and 14 days of unplanned downtime at $12,000 an hour. You can see how significant that is. If programs were in place to inspect that gear on a more regular basis, the reliability could have been increased. The concern over lubrication could have been addressed, and therefore all of these costs could have been avoided. The 5Y analysis on the second case, lack of lubrication again because the valve was turned off for a shutdown and not turned back on. Why was the valve not turned on? There was a clear startup process to ensure that the <laughs> There was not a clear startup process to ensure that the valve was turned on. Why was the lack of lubrication not detected? Again, no inspection program in place to regularly look at the gear. Why was there no inspection program? Again, assumptions made. Somebody else is checking it. And again, what happens with assumptions? No communication back and forth between the departments. Nobody checking it. Significant failures significant cost, reduced reliability. The interesting thing is company A and B are the same company. These failures occurred three years apart. Think of those expenses. Think of trying to explain that to your management if it occurred. That finishes this initial presentation. We will take some questions. We wanted to let you know in the future we will be offering a more complete presentation on reliability. Our initial presentation will be in August this year out in Utah. We invite you to stay tuned for future presentations as well. During those sessions we go into much more details of the mathematics and go through more examples and actually work through examples at your plan. Uh, we have a question. The question is, what would be the first step in getting my plant to better reliability? With that, one of the first things to do is to assess where you are right now. You have to establish that baseline. There are some different steps that you would take, being the key being going through your different systems and identifying how you can split them up and put them into a situation where you can calculate out the overall reliability, whether they are in series or they are in parallel, or they are combined systems. Once you've got that base in place, you can then identify whether you need to address the least or most reliable during in certain portions of that system to increase your overall reliability. A second question. Um, does IKD offer reliability services, solutions, custom to a plant operation? We certainly do. We would actually uh, be able to work with you, come out and do those initial assessments, make recommendations on, how, on what steps should be taken first, and then also help you to work through longer term plans for things like long lead item components or services that are necessary. We can also train your staff on inspections to look for what items to look for to keep your equipment more reliable.
What reference do you recommend for calculating multi-component reliability for the systems? Um, I would have to look back at the references that we were offered that we offered there. If you go through the initial uh, the initial calculations that we had for parallel series uh, and combined systems, that would help you uh, to first initially address that. Um, if you'd like to contact us, we can answer that better uh, when I take a closer look at those references. Do we have some other questions? Please feel free to enter them in the question box. Well, it seems that we've been able to answer all the questions that are out there, and we certainly appreciate your time today. Remember that this there will be a link for this webinar, which has been recorded, for you to view it again with others. It will also be available on the IKD website. We encourage you to contact us if you have further questions or if we can help you in any way. Also remember, as I said, we are offering a more detailed reliability course, the first time being towards the end of August, in, in, uh, in Utah, and we invite you to sign up for that. We will be sending out uh, email messages, email bursts uh, with that information in the future, and we, we will also be offering more training classes and more webinars as well. We invite you to stay tuned. Again, thank you very much for your time, and we appreciate you coming to Industrial Kiln and Dryer Group, where we offer complete solutions to your needs.